Hey guys, today's video is going to be five brands that excite me slash intrigue me and then five brands that don't. And I kind of was thinking I was going to title this video something really cheesy like five brands that make me fawn and five brands that make me yawn. That's good, isn't it? I can't be stopped. I got this idea from Andrea Mattiano, which I would link her video down below, but she actually ended up taking her video down because I guess some people were getting super offended by it. Um, not really sure why, but I thought it was a really fun idea and I realized that there were definitely some brands that intrigued me and some that didn't, so let's just get into it. I'm going to start with the brands that don't intrigue me first. Elf Cosmetics is one of those brands that doesn't intrigue me. For some reason, I feel like I have a bad taste in my mouth about Elf, which is weird because I do have a few Elf products that I like that do work for me. But I think like in the past, I've tried some Elf products and they just weren't the best for me. They just didn't work with my skin. Elf has stepped up their game a lot in the past like few years and they're probably a lot better than they were before. But for some reason, Elf is just something that when they come out with a new product, I'm not excited about it. When I go into the store and see a big huge elf section i'm not like over the moon about wanting to buy something from them even though that i have products that i like from elf elf just doesn't get me excited another brand that does little to nothing for me is it cosmetics i feel like maybe it's the price point for what you get or maybe it's like the demographic that they're marketing to their brushes seem to be one of the most popular items and for me i feel like there's so many drugstore brushes now that i'm just not gonna pay the price tag to get an IT Cosmetics brush. Even though I'm sure that they're great and high quality, they're just so expensive. I am a little intrigued by their CC cream. I think it is the matte one. Other than that, there's just nothing about that brand that has made me want to go and try them. Smashbox. Another brand that I have several products from Smashbox that I enjoy, but their eyeshadow palettes just seem lackluster to me. They don't seem like anything that I want to dive into and inspire me to do different looks. The quality of eyeshadows from what I've tested before was just kind of like Eh, nothing special. Obviously, there's more to brand than the eyeshadow palettes. But there's nothing that I've tried from Smashbox that I tried just because I was curious. Everything I've ever tried from Smashbox has definitely been a recommendation from someone, whether it was on YouTube or, you know, someone that I know personally. For some reason, it doesn't... It doesn't scream my name. So another brand that just never really cared for is Bare Minerals. There's nothing about them that's disappointed me or let me down or anything like that. But the brand just doesn't do anything for me. I'm not a big, big powder person. One of their best selling products is like their powder foundation. And I'm just not a powder foundation kind of gal. Maybe one day I'll give it a shot. But I have oily skin and I feel like it seems like it's not going to work out for me to have a powder foundation. And the oils coming through and everything. So I do feel like Bare minerals is marketed typically towards like an older demographic as well I usually just don't get excited when they release new products and the last brand that i don't get excited about is kkw beauty and this has nothing to do with whether or not i like the kardashians i actually was kind of like into keeping up with the kardashians for like a hot minute and it was like one of those guilty pleasure things because i knew it was kind of dumb but then i was like mm, but i kind of like it so the reason i don't really gravitate towards kkw beauty is because they do a lot of like contour kits and things like that and i'm not a big contour they have a lot of face products because of course that is what, you know, Kim Kardashian what is known for is her contouring, highlighting, like, the whole nine. And I don't do any of that really on a regular basis. So, for me, and the price point on a product like that, I just can't justify the price for something that I don't use regularly. I will say their packaging is really beautiful, like, sleek, nude. I do like that. But otherwise, I just don't find it to be something that I want to invest my money in. Now on to the positives. Brands that make me fawn. Beauty Bakery is a brand that I have never tried anything from, but I'm very curious about. Cosmo by Haley here on YouTube did a collab with them like several years ago for one of the lip whips, and I just tend to buy my makeup in person more often. I've not seen Beauty Bakery in stores anywhere, so I'm not sure if it even is. I love their packaging. It's so cute. I've heard a lot of good reviews about it. I love their inclusivity. It is like more on the high end side. So I think that's one thing that's also stopped me from trying it because I just feel like I get so attached to my good drugstore brands. Beauty Bakery is a brand that is definitely on my radar. And my brands that don't intrigue me, I didn't include any non-cruelty free brands because that was kind of a given. But actually Benefit is a brand that isn't cruelty free that really intrigues me. And I really wish they would go cruelty free. I have tried products from them before, whether it was before I was cruelty free or through getting free gifts. And I've not been disappointed by any of it. I love like their little packaging. They came out with a new cheek leader palette that I've been seeing a lot of people rave about and I would love to try it. 
But I just wish they would go cruelty free. That's the only thing that's stopping me from buying Benefit because their products look so good and so many people talk about them. I would definitely be on the Benefit wagon if they would just be cruelty free. You probably would have guessed this because I love ColourPop. ColourPop is definitely oversaturated in terms of releases. It doesn't seem like it affects the quality of their products so you know, maybe it's not a bad thing that they release a lot of products. There are collections that they come out with that I don't care about. Certain, you know, collabs that they come out with that just don't intrigue me. But in a general sense, when ColourPop comes out with brand new products, I'm curious about it. I do have quite a few ColourPop products and I'm not disappointed in any of them. ColourPop is definitely a brand that I would say is definitely worth your money. If you're a beginner, you should go in. To me, they come out with more out of the box products than a lot of other brands, but it's mostly the affordability to the quality. Like the quality is so high. ColourPop actually has probably my favorite eyeshadow formula and they're so inexpensive. So they definitely catch my eye every time they release something. Well, another affordable brand that really intrigues me is Milani. Maybe it's their packaging, but every time I would go into CVS, I'd always want to buy new Milani products. Milani has not ever really let me down either. They're on the pricier side of drugstore, but they're still way more affordable than like high-end. You get a high-end quality product with Milani and you pay a drugstore price. So for me, when they come out with new products, I'm intrigued about it. I want to try it. They even came out with some like body shimmer glow lava thing. And I don't even like that sort of stuff. And I was really curious to try it. So the last brand that I have not even tried that intrigues me, but is on my list of things to try is Fenty Beauty. There's obvious things that everybody loves about Fenty. Their inclusivity, their creative out of the box like products and shades and things like that. And so with all those things tied together, it makes me definitely want to try it. And also something that just gets brownie points from the brand to me. So Juicy Jazz here on YouTube, she's one of my favorite YouTubers in her eyes. And honestly, in the realm of YouTube, she's not that big in terms of subscriber count and everything. And they send her PR and for me, I don't know why, but that just makes me feel like Fenty Beauty is sending not just bigger influencers PR. I realize it's a business transaction. They're only going to send PR to people that they feel will help them get more business. But I do see a lot of brands just totally not even giving, I would say, medium-sized influencers a chance because they're only focused on sending it to the bigger influencers. And what happens, a lot of their products don't even get reviewed because those people get sent so much product. I've heard so many good things about Fenty. Look at Rihanna. She's so beautiful. And if she's wearing something that makes her look that way, I want to look that way. That is it for the five brands that make me fawn and five brands that make me yawn. I thought of that in the shower this morning and I was like, I have to run with that. Thank you guys so much for stopping by and checking me out. Subscribe if you're not already subscribed and I will see you in my next video. Bye. Hey guys, today's video is going to be a...